Hello, my beautiful friends. I'm Sister Becky and welcome to my porch where we continue along in our devotional journey series. If you haven't joined me before, or maybe even if you have, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Click the little bell to be notified of future content as it becomes available. Today we're continuing on in our devotional series, 100 Days of Believing Bigger. And today the scripture reading comes from Proverbs 24 and verse 14. It says this, Wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a bright future and your hopes will not be cut short. The devotional author writes, A key part of embracing our own significance is welcoming support. I love this. After all, God uses others to bless us, teach us, and mature us for our now and our next. Look at the disciples. They needed Jesus to be more than their Messiah. They needed him to be their teacher, comforter, and encourager. But it was Jesus' intention that they would receive the gift of his presence too. He wanted them to become the gifts and containers of his presence, wisdom, so that others could grow. The same holds true with you. God desires that you live in communion with other people who can pour into you. But first you have to believe that you're worthy. That was the real question the disciples had to ask themselves when Jesus invited them to leave all they had to follow him. I imagine they had already been praying for a life shift so they would experience something more. What will you do when the opportunity to shift shows up? Your shift will likely happen through encounters with other people who can teach, encourage, and build you up. But you must have eyes to see, a heart to receive, and a deep appreciation for wisdom. A new level of wisdom is an important key to unlocking the future that God has waiting for you. Be someone whom others want to pour into. Own your significance by operating with discipline and diligence. You're worthy of the wonderful and believe it to receive it. I love that our devotional author today talked about how important communion was and the community around the disciples. They had Jesus who spent three amazing years with this intimate group of people, teaching them, encouraging them, showing them leadership skills and abilities so that when he left, they too could continue on the mission to build up and encourage and create community wherever they went. Too many times today, especially in the Western culture, here in the United States, we still hang on to that old Western theology of we're in it by ourselves, we're a lone ranger, and that is all we need. That is so untrue. We were built for community and communion with God. If you go back to the beginning of the scripture in the Bible, God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden where they could have an intimate communion together. I love the scripture that talks about them walking around in the garden in the cool of the day and having this amazing conversation with God. That's what we were created for. And too many times in our culture we think, I don't need church. I don't need to be around other people to believe in Jesus. And while that's true, you don't need other people around you to believe in Jesus. You do need other people around you to help you grow, to bless you, to encourage you, to pray for you. And they need you to pray for them, to encourage them, to build them up. And when we don't participate in this community that we call church, then we rob ourselves of blessings and we rob others of being a blessing to them. So brothers and sisters, I want to ask you, where are you today? Are you in a community where you are using this wisdom that God has given you, that God has blessed you with, to be an encourager and building up the community around you? Or are you trying to play the Lone Ranger? I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. I pray you have a beautiful and a blessed day. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.